Well, hello, howdy, and good day to you. Welcome on back to the channel. Today, we got something pretty exciting, and we're starting you off here in the fish cave right now because I want to I just show off my very first bolt action hunting rifle. I, surprisingly, I have never owned one. So I've, I've grown up with, uh, I had a, a 30 6 that my grandfather passed down that wasn't uh, a bolt action. Uh, still a really cool gun, but just not very accurate. I've had uh, a bolt action 410 shotgun. That was actually my first shotgun. I've dove hunted with that. That's what I started off with. I still use it every once in a while. It's a cool it's a cool gun. I've got a number of shotguns and, and some other rifles, but not a bolt action hunting rifle. And that is the quintessential, quintessential, that's how you say it. That is what you think about when you're going out deer hunting with a rifle or really what got me thinking about getting one and, and wanting to build one uh, or make one was when I went to New Zealand and I hunted with uh, my buddy JT and Todd and Todd hunts around the world. He had a really nice bolt action rifle. Uh, I literally dropped it on the rocks and was still able to come back with uh, this tar right here. So a really good rifle, really good scope, uh, just a good setup that I could go deer hunting with, also go in the mountains, hunt, hunt goats with. That is what we have here today, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you my very first bolt action hunting rifle. So I wanna go over this rifle with y'all today because it's pretty special. It's my first bolt action hunting rifle. Uh, and we're gonna take it out to the range I've had it out once just to zero it. Uh, it got it was really hot, and I had a can on it. So I want to take it back out again and see where it see where it's lining up and make sure we're all zeroed. This rifle is a 308 Winchester caliber. It is made by a company called Brace Built. Uh, they're actually a local company, which is really neat. The Brace Built sleeper. What makes this gun unique? Uh, this is a Lifetime guarantee on the gun. I'm sure a lot of guns have that, but the bolt assembly uh, The barrel it, that is all built in house together as, as one unit one system So there's not uh, they're not getting other parts uh, For that and then shipping them in and then uh, putting that into into their own. It's all done in-house, uh, so what that does, it just makes it butter smooth. The, the tolerances on this are uh, extremely fine, we'll say. And it is a 60 degree bolt throw instead of a 90, just makes it easier for uh, loading, reloading, you know, faster shooting. They do put a Timney trigger in here, so I got a, a set it at about three pounds right now. It's, you can set it from I think 1.5 to 4. 1.5 is like feather light, so three is perfect. The rifle is capable, <laughs> not the shooter, but the rifle is guaranteed to shoot sub half MOA at 100 yards. Uh, the scope on here I went with a VX6 HD. It's a 3 to 18 magnification, so it's not the biggest thing in the world, but man, I tell you what, you put a big piece of glass on here, it's like a camera lens, it, it definitely adds some weight. One thing cool about the 308 that I didn't know that Braceville taught me was uh, that there's just, there's more information on the 308 than almost any other caliber because the military has been using it for so many years. But you can have a shorter barrel and it doesn't affect the accuracy as much as some of the other other rifles like a 6.5 Creedmoor or uh, some of those other ones that they actually need. Uh, a longer barrel just for the the pressure if you're going for something that you're going to be lugging around putting in a backpack like i am you know it, i'm going to stick that thing in there i don't want it sticking way out um, it's nice to have shorter barrel so it's an 18 inch barrel and it comes in at 8.8 .8 pounds the stock is just a mag pull stock it's just a you know polycarbonate really tough um, you know, light material. So again, the, the purpose of this gun is, is to be, it's gonna get scratched up, it's gonna get beat up, and it's, it's gonna be going into some pretty nasty places most likely. So there's no need to get a really nice wooden stock. I, I definitely want one of those down the road, like a, a nice 
wooden bolt action rifle, you know, more like traditional. Uh, but this one is just more purposeful for all around, like just beating up. I also have a Magpul bipod on here that adds some weight as well. So all together, this, this whole combo is like 11 pounds or 11 and a half pounds uh, when you add the can on there too. That's a Yankee Hill uh, can. So that, that thread's on the end. Now I've got a muzzle brake on there. It gets pretty hefty. But I'm glad I went with a little shorter barrel because it just keeps keeps adding up. Every ounce counts when you're hiking up a mountain. Also got the colors to match my packs. So I've got a couple of Kuyu packs. I really like like their packs, and these are just like standard olive drab gray colors that blend in just about anywhere. And this is just green black. Uh, and the barrel is fluted with the green that matches the stock as well. So all that matches up really good. Besides the great specs on this rifle, the coolest thing is that I got to watch Bracebill put it together, which I saw the gunsmith, you know, I met the gunsmiths. I, I watched the tooling happen. I watched the whole thing come together. And that really made it, you know, it made me appreciate the rifle even more. This is my very first bolt action hunting rifle in 308 Winchester. And boy, oh boy, I think we went all out on it. So now it's time to take it out to the range and see how it's shooting. All right, we're at the range. I'm just going to be using match grade ammo. They actually gave me. Uh, some ammunition. I'm gonna use just that and then I'm gonna experiment with some different hunting rounds from Hornady, Barnes, some different ones that I've looked at. I want you guys to let me know in the comments though if you have a favorite. Okay, 100 yards. Federal premium. Match grade ammo, 185 grains. We got two really close to each other. I'm just gonna send this third one here. I think that one went in the same hole. Without the can, it's a little high and left, but the group is like that. Okay, next three, we're gonna go with the can. Let's see where they line up. So I'm not an expert, but what I've realized so far, just last time I zeroed, um, and just kind of like fine tuning today and using the can versus no can is, uh, it definitely, the group definitely opens up when I'm using the can. So the first three shots were right here. One, two, three. That is a very tight group right there. I mean, basically two holes in the same spot. And then when I put the can on, so this could be the barrel heating up as well. One, two, three. So we got a much bigger group right there. So I'm not sure if that's the, the barrel just heating up or if it's the can that's changing the accuracy, but uh, I've made a couple of clicks, a couple of adjustments. We're going to see if we can just really pop it right in the center right there, get a nice group inside of there. So it will be good. Okay, three rounds just with the muzzle brake, 100 yards, with a couple of clicks, a couple of tweaks. Let's see if we can get it right on. First shot on center, just a little high. Ooh, dead bull. Okay. I definitely don't need to make any other adjustments on leverage. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this turret in. Okay, zeroed. We're gonna put the can on again. Shoot three more shots, just see where we end up, and we're done. Mm. 
little tighter group, but it's it's just a little lower. I think it adjusts my shot a little lower. It opens it up a little bit. But I think on the the first round with the can, it's not gonna really matter, like in a, a hunting scenario. I think we are good. I'm gonna call this good, at least for my skills. So right here is uh, no can. Actually right here is with can and um, two holes went inside of each other. Um, it seems like with the can we're a little low and to the right, so I might have to just remember, make a little mark on my dial, on my scope for when I'm using um, just the muzzle brake versus the can. And that way I can make adjustments when I'm out there. If I wanna keep it on, take it off, whatever. But I'm good with that. Now the next thing we gotta do is take this thing out couple hundred yards see what it's gonna do you know 200 300 see how much it drops and just get used to it hunting season's coming soon feel good about the the brace built sleeper feel good about my grouping next time I go out I'm gonna have some some new ammo the ammo I'm gonna be hunting with and I might have to make some little tweaks to it but with the match grade we're good to go now we got the chicken squawking so I'm gonna feed him some lunch we've got a bunch of scraps here from the treehouse, Amy's leftover food. I got some of my Chick-fil-A waffle fries in there. I would never, number one, I would never not eat my Chick-fil-A sandwich fully, but number two, I would never feed my chickens chicken. And then we just got some other fruits and vegetables in there. We got some berries, we got some celery. Easy girls, easy now. Get you some of that. Pretty exciting news on this chicken check right here. We now have our first new layer out of the hens that we got earlier in the spring. So they're full grown now and they're slowly starting to lay and the first one, uh, the first one, the first gal is actually this one right here, the smallest one. But she's been acting kind of weird lately, pretty broody. And uh, she's been like looking for places to dig and lay and she finally laid her first egg just the other day. If you want more of that pleasant surprise that we had, Lake Life Family Channel, link down below where we talk about chickens and all things treehouse and families. Actually, I'm gonna see if we have any more eggs right here. See if we have any new eggs. Oh, she's laying right now. Wow, that's, wow, okay. Okay, what's crazy about that is that's a different hen than what was laying the other day. That is an Easter egger. And what is really cool about Easter eggers is they lay different color eggs like every time they lay. Like one, one week you might get some blue eggs, the next week you might get green eggs, or it can vary day to day, and they just, that's really cool. That's the first time that I've seen one of the Easter Eggers go into the nesting box, so we're gonna get a surprise here very shortly. Don't know what color egg it's gonna be. That's the first egg that an Easter Egger is going to lay out of the flock. I'm super excited about that. I'm super excited about that, yo, that's pretty cool. They might just be hitting the chain reaction, like they're all gonna start laying here in the next few weeks, and then we're really gonna see a ton of eggs here at the treehouse, which would be awesome. Looks like our Easter egger is out of the nesting box, so we'll find out here in just a minute what she laid. What could it be? Could be a blue one, could be green, maybe yellow, pink. What do we got in here? Oh, it's a blue one. Oh, that is sweet. And her very first egg she laid in the nesting box like a good girl. And that's really because I left one of the Dorking's eggs in there. This is one of the first Dorking's eggs, or like a cream color. And then she just laid this awesome looking blue egg. That is so cool. That is so cool, y'all. Elder hen. You know, just your typical jumbo chocolate or jumbo brown chocolate specks. You don't need to go up there right now, but you're, you'll be laying soon. Don't worry. I can't wait to go show Stephanie. Amy's about to go down for a nap, but I gotta show her. It's so cool. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Actual homemade oatmeal greenies. Wow. Oh, I gotta say, life is. Always good here at the treehouse. Honey, come here. 
I need to show you something. <laughs> She's responding to your call. Look, it's like the same color as my OSG color. <laughs> She's responding. <laughs> well, that's a new thing. It's because she heard me call into the chickens this morning. <laughs> Emmy, look at this egg. <gasps> look at the color. It looks like your dress. Whoa. No, we're not going to touch it because it's very breakable. It's very breakable. Egg. 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 Yep. It's the same color as mommy's watch. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it is. It's the OSG color. Oh my gosh. It's like good luck. It's that tree is house crazy. good that luck. Is, that Dad. Is. That is OSG blue. I, I need to like trademark that OSG. Well, no, put it up against your uh, your deal. What? Oh, what? That's a little darker there. Yeah. But... So crazy. <laughs> Perfect match. Look at that. It's so beautiful. So this is a dorking. These are our normal brown chocolates, chocolates out of the red, the reds, and then now we have we have colored eggs. That's this is so cool. like I need to make Emmy some breakfast. <laughs> Use one of these. <laughs> these are tinies, yeah. You give Emmy an omelet with these little little dudes, and these are the jumbos. Alrighty, y'all. In today's video, we have gone over my very first hunting rifle. We have gone out to the range. We have come back, and we have had surprise Easter eggs. And now I'm in the cart. I have my bow in the back, and we are just gonna back it up here to our little target are about 20 30 yards away and we're just gonna make sure that we are on point keep the outdoor skills quite sharp 30 hoo, hoo, hoo. gosh dang this bow man this bow is fire just dirty cheese I've been trying to end my days with some archery, so just kind of fine tune, you know, get some muscle memory going on and just stay used to it. So, you know, 30 yard group, not bad, not bad. Got two in the white. Actually, that one, the last one might be in there too. Kind of drifted down on the last one, but not bad, not bad. That's going to be something very much struggling in the woods right there. And speaking of hunting, and chickens, chicken watch, chicken maintenance. I just got a, uh, a trail cam. It's some Moultrie uh, 7000 i series, and it's it's for uh, cellular use. It, it goes to your your phone, so I'll get live updates whenever something's coming through here, so I can grab the bow, grab the the air gun, whatever, and take care of business. So I've been wanting that. I tried to hook that up with some other security cameras, but I just wasn't getting the, the good connect connectivity and it wasn't reading out very far. I was still seeing the Bobcats on my trail cameras, but unfortunately, you know, if it's not live, you know, I don't really know they're out here. So now I can get live updates and come on out. I'm going to sign it off right here, y'all. It's been a very outdoor day, great day. Always a great day when I can get out in the outdoors and do uh, some specially outdoor things. Went to the range. Um, I suggest y'all start going out there and doing that, getting ready for hunting season because the closer we get to September, October, ranges are going to be packed. Just go do it now. Get them zeroed in. Wishing you the best of luck in all of your outdoor adventures, y'all. I will see you very soon. Stay safe. Stay cool out there. God bless you. Now it's going to fall. It's pretty big. Cool.